Hello everyone, how's it going? So let's go ahead and uh, wrap up this first texture set here. We're gonna fill in all this um, white spot with, uh, it seems to be kind of like a painted metal. Um, I think we can get pretty far just by copying what we did with the space bar and pasting it here. Uh, but it does seem to be slightly different. I wouldn't say it's one-to-one. -one. Um, if we go ahead and look at this reference, it seems to be a lot more matte. Like we can see a nice clear shine here and this seems to be uh, a bit rougher overall, but more or less kind of the exact same. Uh, just tweaking a few values here and there and we should be able to get there uh, for the most part. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's close out from what we were doing before. And this is gonna be the metal layer. So let's go ahead and turn that on. And we get this nice gold. And uh, let's see, the painted metal was this here. I'm going to go ahead and copy all of it. Copy layers. And I guess we don't need this anymore, this sort of default layer. Uh, let's go into this group that we made and paste layers. So that's going to go ahead and uh, start computing pretty much uh, for this new geometry, how exactly it wants to apply its masks. Um, we're going to have to change some things since we did some like custom painting and things like the fingerprints don't really make sense. Um, but, okay, interesting. The rust is definitely pretty intense. Uh, so we'll have to dial that back. But let's go ahead and kind of go through each one of these layers one by one and... Uh, adjust it accordingly. It's not quite the look we're going for just yet, but it's, it's heading in the right direction. Uh, so I'm going to just turn off the fingerprint layer. Actually, I'm going to turn everything off and just sort of like work our way up. Um, and surprisingly, this is much less layers than I remember. So uh, the metal is pretty standard. This is only something we're seeing when it's like scratched off. So I'm going to keep that the way it is. Um, occlusion dirt seems to be in this area specifically, so we're not going to really be seeing this too, too much. So I'm going to turn the dirt level down. Um, all right. And then paint is its own whole layer. That's probably why, um, I thought this was so much less than it actually was. So shiny paint, uh, looking at this, it doesn't seem too, too shiny. So I'm going to turn the roughness up to kind of match more of this look. It also seems to be a little bit darker, I'd say. Um, okay. One of the things that I'm not liking so much is the scratches, the surface imperfections. Let's go ahead and turn these off and work our way up. So surface imperfections. This gives me the illusion of it being pretty smooth. And of course we don't want it to be perfectly smooth, but I think this is kind of like a thick paint. Um, at least that's the vibe I'm getting from it. I think that's a bit too much. One way I want to solve this is by turning the tiling of this up a bit more. Um, so the bumps aren't as big and like bubbly. Could probably push that a bit further. Maybe at this resolution, it's hard to to get that look. I'm liking how the texture is following the UVs that we set up. Pretty happy with that. Uh, I think 20 is a good tiling resolution. From there, I'm gonna affect the height a little bit so we have it at 0 0.0140. Let's try 0 0.01. Um, or 0 0.005, just cut that in half. So it's a lot smoother, but it still has like the remnants of like a painted look. I think that's a bit more appropriate for this. I want it to be just very matte. Um, speckles that we added before. I think the height on this is a bit too much. I'm going to change this to be about half of what it was. And then sort of crunch it a bit more. I think it's just too prevalent. Um, 
let's see, I can affect the position. Just sort of mess with the values a little bit. This one's very big, so I just kind of want to offset it. Looking for more stuff like this. Um, even then it might be a bit big. Very, very little subtle stuff like this is what I'm mostly looking for. And then I don't mind even brightening it up in that case. I just want it to be very, very uh, small. Cool, I'm liking the texture of that. Okay, this is the paint mask itself and not so much the the white spots, just making sure. The roughness for this goes up. I'm surprised that this is such a impact on the, the overall roughness. I think I need to turn the contrast way up, that's why. Uh, so now the roughness should mostly just be in the uh, speckled areas. And let's take a look at how that looks when we're just focusing on roughness. Turn it up a little bit. These are more just like little dings in the uh, the metal. Uh, let's get back into our material view. Scratches. Um... The thing is, this is something that's inside of the frame, so there really shouldn't be any scratches. And if there are some scratches, they should be very, very subtle and light. Uh, because of so, I'm going to... I still want to keep them, but I want them to be uh, a little less prevalent. So let's turn the tiling up so they're smaller. Uh, and turn the balance down. Like, little nicks like that are fine, I think. Um, let's affect the height a little bit. Lower it a little bit and wait for the auto save to go through. Okay, um, now that I got a better look at it and I'm looking in this area, I think the surface imperfections are a little too obvious. So let's lower the opacity of that a little bit and the scratches, we could probably do the same. I want it to be like noticeable from a distance, but not like super obvious, right? Like the inside isn't going to be affected too much. Maybe the bottom, uh, but not so much the inside, just getting sort of mangled. Um, surface imperfections, now that I'm looking at it, it's pretty much unnoticeable. <laughs> So I think what I'm going to actually do here is turn the height up again and turn the tiling up. Uh, in the map, I think it was. Yeah, let's turn this down. Oh, it was the contrast that really made a big change. Okay. Let's put the contrast back in the middle, um, which is going to affect our roughness. I'm going to turn the roughness off completely and the color, actually. I just want this to be affecting the height. Um, and we can go back here, turn the contrast way down, just so we get some like paint texture. And then we can affect the, the tiling on this and get it to give it a, a certain look there, kind of like a painted brush look. 17 seems to be pretty good. Just want to make sure it's noticeable when we pull the camera out a little bit. Um, and then there's one last thing that I actually want to add to the paint. If we look in here, we kind of have these like caked on splotches of dirt in a random color. Now some of it is targeted dirt, which we're going to get to in a little bit. But some of this stuff just kind of seems more uh, randomized. So I thought what we could do is add in a fill layer. Call this um, caked dirt random um, add a black mask add a fill to this black mask and let's just use a just a standard grunge map as kind of a, uh, a mask that we can work off of and just sort of have some kind of 
pattern like this displaying all over it. So let's see if there's just some dirt. Like something like this, that's more concrete. Dirt large, dirt muddy, this might be a good one. Dirt scratched. Uh, we can give this one a go, see how it looks. Um, and we're gonna want to tile this quite a bit more. Maybe seven. I like how that scratch looks and right there, that's pretty cool. Uh, of course, we're gonna have to play with this a bit. I want the contrast to be low. I don't want it to be like too uh, intense. And the balance we can turn down a bit. Let's see if we can mess with some of these blend settings. I guess overlay isn't gonna work when it's straight up black. Um, so let's just mess with the opacity. And then everything like roughness and all that's also being affected. So I just want color and roughness. And for the roughness, can turn it up a bit, but the catch is I want to go and change our um, what we're editing here to be actually roughness and not base color. And then we can lower the opacity of the roughness on this. So it's mostly what's underneath, but it's still being affected in the areas um, because I don't want to have to like crunch the contrast on this. I like how it looks with the color visually. So let's turn that down. Give it a second to uh, to update that. So it's mostly shiny like it is underneath, but subtle changes. Let's go and look at our roughness. So we can see when we turn it up, it goes up a little bit. And it's just very gently affecting some areas, making it a bit rougher. Can change our layers back to base color. It's going to be more useful for when we're doing our standard material setup. Uh, and let's go back to material. So the color is still a little bit too obvious. I guess when we're switching between these, it becomes a little uh, laggy. Okay, so we get a, a subtle change, um, and I kind of want to make it not pure white. Like I've said in pretty much every part, there is no pure white or pure black in anything. So I'm going to give it a little color, like a bit of a dirt. More like this, right? It's like a light dirt color. Um, kind of see how that looks over the model. It's looking pretty good in most areas. Considering if we turn it on and off, it's adding a little bit of uh, variety. And then I think it just might be a little bit too noticeable. So I'll lower it a little bit. I just want it to be mega subtle, right? Like it makes a difference, but not a ton. And uh, I think that'll do it for the paint layer. We do have a mask on the paint layer. Um, we added some custom mask paintings. I'm gonna get rid of that because I was applying to the space bar. Uh, and let's see how we set up our mask for this. So I'm seeing the edges are getting chipped quite a bit and I'm seeing stuff like this, which is a little, uh, intense for my liking. So let's see if we can find some examples of where exactly the paint is being chipped. Um, and some of the connecting parts, like little tiny, tiny pieces at the bottom. Um, this is more dirt and rust. It doesn't seem like we're really getting much paint chipping, so I'm gonna just dial this way, way back. 
and maybe if it like comes up in a few areas that's okay but i don't want it to be the norm by any means Just turning the levels up and seeing what I'm getting. Either way, I would turn the contrast way up. Yeah, and we're getting some some edges in there. Uh, if I were to do this, I'd turn the grunge way up. So it's more just like kind of completely random. But maybe that's a bit a bit too much. I think subtlety is kind of the key here. Yeah, this is just too much. What if I turn the contrast super low? And then just got like a couple areas where it's just very lightly wearing down. I think that might be the way to go. Uh, and then, then that would make me want to sort of change the speckles to be... The speckles kind of look like the paint is chipping. In that case, I'd want them to be more white and then uh, make them a lot less visible. Just so they seem like they're actually something different than uh, edgeware. So let's just turn them way down this is more what i was going for anyways um give it a tiny 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 yellow tinge to it and then lower it a little bit more See if we can offset it in a way that's more visually appealing. Should be checking the other side as well. Looks fine. Maybe a little bit less opaque. Cool. And then as for sort of the edge scratches, yeah, I think that's still a bit much. So I'm going to turn the contrast back up. I don't necessarily even want any paint chipping, but if it's like a little faded in some areas, I think that's a bit more okay. So sort of like here, I think is fine. But like that, it's kind of silly looking, isn't it? Curvature, turn down. Scratches, we don't want those on this. Yeah, I'm more okay with something like that. Like it's, it's just kind of fading a little bit. Very strange looking pattern to it though. Maybe clamp the contrast on it a bit more. Yeah, like I'm more okay with things like this popping up in certain areas, but this looks uh, a bit too uniform to me. It looks like a generator. So let's just add a paint layer to it and do a bit of uh, custom painting here. Grab one of our favorite kind of brushes here. Turn it to black, lower the hardness a bit. Um, turn it to white. Okay, that's what we're going for. Uh, 
yeah, like that's kind of cool there and like stuff like that. I can work with that for sure. Okay, so that'll do it for the paint for now. Let's check out how the rust is affecting things. Um, okay, interesting. Let's uh, look at some reference here. So this seems to be more subtle like surface rust. Um, let's get kind of like a bottom shot. Uh, where did we have those again? Or I guess we can see this. There's There definitely is rust all over this. Yeah. Okay, so it is getting decently rusty. That's good to know. And this is kind of the look I'm going for with this. Um, we're not going to get any custom paint on it because that's applying to the space bar. Uh, this, though, I do want to turn the contrast down pretty low. Interesting, and that's giving us this sort of brush pattern. Oh, it's because I'm doing it on the wrong layer. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. Okay, let's actually get on the fucking <laughs> right layer here. <laughs> um, okay, rust spreading, rust contrast, turn that way down. It's also not cutting in very deep. I'm going to affect the height a bit more, turn this to maybe 0.5. Um, yeah, let's check out the mask. So rust contrast is low, rust spreading, can turn that up a little bit. It's looking a little intense down there. Let's try turning it down again. I like what it's doing here and sort of scattered across, but I don't want it to be too, too uniform. Um, drip intensity, maybe lower it. Turn spread smoothness up, actually. I kind of like how it goes from being its own thing to uh, more like infectious almost. Like it's spreading quite a bit. Um, let's see if we can turn the contrast up with that. No, we definitely want the contrast lower. And uh, in this case, let's keep it low and then we'll just sort of paint out some areas we don't want. Maybe darken the color a little bit. Yeah, not that dark, but uh, let's go back to what we had and darken it a little bit. It's also not very saturated, is it? But I guess that's a bit much. So lower. Saturate and uh, hmm. let's go ahead and give this some manual painting. So we're going to right click and add a paint layer. And turn this to black. And just tell some of these areas to kind of chill out a bit. Like I, I don't mind this having rest because it would naturally have rust here, but it was just a bit too much for my liking. I want it to be more of like an accent than like a, a main thing that's going on here. Like all of these don't have to be dripping in rust, right? So just kind of masking it out as best as we can. I do like this because it's obvious and the camera's going to see it, but it doesn't have to be too, too uniform, right? And then this here, since we stacked all these UVs, these are going to be uniform. So I want kind of nothing on there that's like going to be super easily noticeable that it's tiling like that. So I'm just going to get rid of that altogether. 
Same with uh, on this side. The less noticeable the tiling, the better. So I'm just going to keep it as matte as possible. Like you can't tell this all the same once I uh, remove everything. This is uh, something I want to clean up a bit. I wanted to clean this up a bit because it's kind of raised higher and it seems like the rust is on things that are a bit lower to the ground. Yeah, some of these are getting kind of intense. I don't mind the odd one being rusty like this guy here i think kind of looks cool standing out like that um but just having them all uniform is a bit a bit much it's a little excessive um And just make sure like your brush is kind of soft when you're doing this kind of stuff. You don't want it to be like a stamp, like you're stamping certain areas out. Like I can click this and it's still visible, but it's just less visible. Um, yeah, I'm pretty cool with how that rust is looking right now. Uh, let's go up. We have another rust, rust occlusion, which, yeah, looks kind of silly and intense. Uh, I'm sure we can still use some of this. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the custom mask. I'm sure we can still use some of this, but um, after some heavy adjusting, probably. Um, that being said, it has been a while since we've saved, and we've had quite a few crashes in this texturing phase so far, so let's go ahead and save really quick. Sweet, so let's uh, see what we can do here to make this look a little bit better. Uh, first of all, level. Uh, let's see if we can just turn this down. Kind of getting it more in the middle, which honestly I don't mind having it more in the middle. And even like in here. Um, let's see the actual rust texture itself. If we can darken it a bit. And maybe turn it up a little bit more. And it's definitely just affecting back here. So I'm kind of cool with it being just like kind of in the back. Um, there's a lot of metal back there. And especially when we're looking from behind, it could be cool to, uh, to see a bit more rust in some areas. Um, I'm not a big fan of this poking through though. So I'm going to paint this out. This was from our previous rust layer. Um, let's just take care of that. It's also making me think, all things considered, I kind of want to brighten our paint a little bit. Maybe not a ton, but a little. You can see what your previous color was right here beside the new color. So it's slightly brighter, obviously not by a ton, but I think it helps a little bit. Um, but let's keep going. So that's the rust. Sharpen layer is going to just crisp everything up. Cool with that. And fingerprints. So we don't actually have any fingerprints um, mapped here because they were mapped to the space bar. I'm just going to refresh this and give this a black mask. We can add a paint layer to this. And we can see if fingerprints make sense. So once again, just typing in finger, let's try and find like a uh, 
index finger. And we can see like a slight subtle uh, effect there. But the thing is, it's like, why would a finger be touching these things, right? But I don't know. I kind of, I kind of like the uh, effect that's adding there. I feel like if you were to touch this area, though, it might be a thumb instead. Like your grip, like gripping it with your right hand, trying to like tinker with it, and your thumb gets on there. Um, let's see if we can affect the roughness a bit. Seems to be a bit intense there. That looks kind of cool. Same with here. Like, let's think of how you would realistically approach touching something like this. You'd probably grab it with your right hand, meaning your thumb would go here, and then your index finger would wrap around to the other side and grab it right about there or i guess that'd be your left hand rather um yeah it just doesn't make too much sense to add fingerprints here so i'm just gonna add some in like some places it doesn't really make too much sense uh, i'm trying to keep this really grounded in uh in logic more than anything Okay, let's see. Kind of seems like that's all we have for this specific paint material. Um, the only thing I would think is like maybe that kind of um, okay, so we're back. We just went through a pretty uh, <laughs> aggressive crash there, but uh, I was managed to sort of get us back to where we were. So what I was saying there before everything sort of hit the fan was um, I wanted to make our actual paint layer a little bit more shiny. So I went through and lowered the roughness and I think that's giving it a much, much better look. And then I also went to our caked dirt layer and I experimented with a few different of the um, grunge maps and sort of played with it. And I got a new look where it's just a bit more uniform and caked on and I think this looks a little bit better. The opacity is super low. Um, but turning it on and off we're seeing quite a, uh, a bit of variation in there. So that's pretty much the only things that I changed. I tried to keep this as, as similar as possible. So the only thing I think we have left to add to this is uh, some more dust. So we do have this occlusion dirt that's in our metal layer which is totally hidden away. So I'm just going to grab this and put it above the paint layer, uh, which means, yeah, it's going to show up in here a bit more. So it is green, which is pretty bizarre. Let's go ahead and uh, adjust this a bit. Lower the saturation, increase the brightness. So it's filling up here pretty heavily. Um, which really isn't that bad. The reference has it kind of like this in a lot of ways. Um, I'm going to turn the brightness up, but then lower the opacity. It's weird how this is happening. Uh, let's see if we can sort of mess with the mask and see if we can clear that out a bit. Uh, dirt level. Uh, grunge amount. Crunch scale, just sort of playing with it. And I like the, the dust sort of really being, even though it's uniform, I kind of like how it looks piling up here. Uh, we can try turning it on and off. It looks pretty natural to me. We wouldn't really be able to get to here um, with an actual typewriter, like it's surrounded by the cage. So having dust pile up here makes sense to me. Um, 
I just don't think there's a, any way that we can fix this without manually painting it out. So let's go ahead and uh, mm. yeah, we're gonna have to manually paint that out. Let's add a paint layer. We got the same brush as before. Turning the hardness down, and just kind of. Painting it out. I might even turn this off of black and make it more of a gray. It's just this like weird dot pattern across that I don't like. Okay, seems a bit better. Um, let's just check the other side. Yeah, we're in a similar thing. Let's really try and get rid of that. It's weird how uniform it is. Don't want anything to look like it's procedurally generated. Something like that's a bit obvious. Uh, and then even then, I think I'm going to drop the opacity of this quite a bit. So, let's see how that looks on and off. Getting some caked dirt in there, which looks pretty cool. I increase the opacity a bit. Um, yeah, I think that'll do it for these parts, unless I want to maybe brighten this up a little bit. Don't really want to lose any of the detail so that's that the only thing left we really have to do uh, on this model is now these guys on the bottom now these guys on the bottom are going to share the same texture as uh, what we just did all the same materials um, but i'm going to want to adjust the values a little bit differently for these guys since it's um kind of a different shape all around so the way that the maps are going to react to things like smart materials and generators is going to be a bit different so I'm gonna go and, oh, I guess I gotta turn this on. And then I didn't redo the fingerprints after the crash. I don't think we really need them. Um, what I'm gonna do though is copy these layers and we're gonna have to make a new group for just down here. So let's go ahead and make a new folder add a mask with color select pick uh, green and let's go ahead and put something in here so we can uh, sort of fine-tune it a little bit I'm gonna call this key bottoms I uh, make it bright red and then yeah this matte ID was shared with the screws so I'm just going to add a paint layer and we can just mask these out like we have done in the past um, I think there's also screws down here and here okay so it should just be these, and then it might be easier to see things uh, from this perspective. So I'm just gonna move over. And then let's go ahead and right click, paste our layers in this group. And uh, like the majority of the work should be done, but we're just gonna have to adjust some values like, like, like um, we did before. If anything, it should be a lot quicker. Um, Sweet, so let's go through this. We don't need this red material. Metal's gonna be the same. Shiny paint is gonna be the same. Surface imperfections. Could probably turn the opacity up on that. This is kind of like the bumpiness, so I'll leave that as it is. 
speckles, little dots. Um, can add a few more on the bottom. Scratches. I don't think we'd get any scratches on the bottom, so I'm actually gonna keep that one off. Caked dirt. Gonna turn the opacity up on that. I think dirt would more naturally accumulate on the bottom, so I'm okay with that. Uh, if anything though, I might wanna turn the contrast up a little bit. And the roughness, maybe a little bit more. Kind of dusty, dirty down there. Uh, so that's the paint. We get the occlusion dirt. Could probably turn that up a bit. Yeah, and it's just focusing around the edge there. You can mess with the grunge scale. Kind of want it to be high so we get a lot more variation. Dirt contrast can be low. Let's actually get some more accurate uh, reference for this. Okay. So this is present, but it's not like super obvious. Same with the, the dirt. Turn that down a bit. Uh, the rust seems to be more prevalent. So we don't need the custom paint layer, obviously. Let's see if we can turn up the rust spreading, though. So we're getting some of them that are getting kind of dinged with rust. I kind of like that. And then rust occlusion isn't doing too much at all, actually. Let's see if we can um, give that a run for its money. Okay, so that's going to focus mostly on the connecting bits, which seems like they do have a light amount. So I can just sort of make it subtle and then go back here for a more... Um, overall look okay sharpen yeah let's name this uh, key bottoms and that's mostly it like the bottom doesn't need too much crazy attention to detail if anything we might want to just go into some of these rusts and add like a paint and then just like paint in some manual rust in some of these spots. Starting like a low gray value. Yeah, I kind of like having it be kind of subtle. Like some of this is a, a bit too much. This I'm going to turn down, but then in some areas, turn up. Just give it some variation. Um. Yeah, and I guess that's not going to, you know, take away too much time because we're kind of trying to just keep it consistent. Um, I'm just scared that it's going to be too dark. But it should be okay. Either way, I'm just going to brighten this a little. And then do the same for the, the other parts we worked on. I guess just to be safe, right? Uh, 
<sighs> oh, definitely a bit too much. But as we can see, it's still brighter than before. I think this is more what we're aiming for. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I think I do want to revisit these screws, though. I think they look a little bit too clean compared to everything now. Uh, and I think a big part of that is this can be rougher. <laughs> Substance is definitely uh, being pushed to its limit today, considering I'm sort of recording audio and video and uh, trying to run 4K maps and all these different generators. It's, it's definitely a lot. Um, so bear with me on this. Sorry about that, guys. Color variation's fine. Something is making it shiny. I think the dirt is too dark. That might be what it is. If I change that to a brown, maybe. Yeah, the roughness is... No, it should be high enough. I don't really know why... That is grunge, sharpen, finish rough, fill. Hmm. Well, I guess if the roughness is up, it's actually seems to be pretty fine. Um, but I think that'll do it for this interior part. Um, yeah, pretty simple, pretty quick. Uh, we actually got a really good foundation for the frame, which I think we're gonna do next. We can copy over the sort of spacebar material that we worked on and uh, build upon that. Um, if I bring my reference into view here, um, we're gonna have to add some of these sort of custom decals in some of these areas. Uh, but that's not really the biggest deal in the world. It shouldn't be too too difficult to do that. It seems like some of these are very light on them as well. So I'd say all in all, uh, I'll probably do that off camera and then we'll copy over the material. And it really seems like the frame is pretty much just one material. So it might be a lot faster actually than uh, what we just did. Um, but anyways, that'll do it for this part. We got one of the three maps done. The next one will be quick. And uh, yeah, we're making some really good progress. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you learned something in this part. And uh, yeah, I'll check you. I'll catch you guys in the uh, next part of this texture. All right, see you guys.